Praise the Lord, saints. Anybody come to praise God tonight? <laughs> Checking to see if I'm in the right place. Any worshipers in the house tonight? <laughs> I tell you what, God is a good God. Thank you, Lord. Can I get an amen? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> God's good. We want to welcome you to the house of prayer. Thank you, Lord. This house has been ordained for all people. That's what he said. Bring them into his holy mountain. Been ordained, sanctified, set apart to worship God. Thank you, Lord. Let's have a little practice. Raise your hands up. <laughs> Don't that feel better already? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We got to shake off the day's stuff. You know what I mean? Shake it off. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're glad to be here. We're just giving you a minute to get settled. We're go I mean, don't settle. I mean, you know, get in your spot. Don't settle down. <laughs> and we're going to open up in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. God, we thank you. Lord, we count it such a privilege to be called one of yours, oh God. I thank you tonight, Lord, for your goodness, oh God. Lord, you looked down through the eon of ages, ages, Lord, and you saw us even on tonight, April 12th, I believe it is, 2017. Knew who was going to be here, ordained it, had a plan from the beginning. God, thank you. Thank you for your plan, oh God, the plan of salvation. Lord, we're so grateful tonight. We know we wouldn't be in this place unless you gave us a mind to, Lord. Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, no way. Not unless you ordained it, oh God. We thank you tonight. We are a grateful people, oh God. I pray, oh God, that your will would be done because I know you have a will for tonight. I know, oh God, there's a plan. And what we want to do is get in the middle of your plan, oh God. We're going to set aside what we want and get in the middle of your plan. I thank you for that, God. Your plan's way better than ours. I thank you, Lord, for healing in this place and setting free. Lord, we thank you for renewing vision tonight. Lord, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength, and we thank you for that, Lord. There's no way we can come into your presence and leave out the same. It's not possible. I thank you, Lord, for your deliverance in this place tonight. God, thank you for your name being lifted up among your people. You're worthy of the praise. And we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen.
face and see you smiling over us. Unseen angels celebrate. sing unending songs of how he saved us, how he loved us, how he delivered us, how he brought us out of everything. We'll never quit. There will be no person to put their hand in the air with their fist up. We're done. We'll never be done. I love Jesus, if you, hadn't, if you couldn't tell.
Savior, amen? We have something to be shouting about. 
We have something to be lifting our hands about. We have something that the world is longing for. They don't even know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. You're a good God. Hallelujah. I bless your name tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We put our hope in Jesus. You know, he's a sure foundation. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise God tonight. Thank you, Lord. God's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, as you can see, Pastor Larry isn't here. I don't think I look like him too much. <laughs> He's not here. Him and Grace are having a good time out antiquing. And so, uh, yeah, praise God. Thank you, Lord. They've been contacting me, showing me all the stuff they're finding. <laughs> All the treasures, that's a blessing. We thank God for that. We're glad you guys are here tonight. Thank you, Lord. Isn't it good to be in his house? <laughs> thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know if we have any choir members here or not. The word had went out that we were going to sing. Maybe you can make your way up while I'm giving the announcements. There's some music right here. I think Jake's got it covered up, but grab one as you're coming up. And if you don't mind, if you could line up back here, that'd be awesome. We're going to expedite the time. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And uh, if Paul and Sheila don't mind, you guys can help us sing on this first one. You know it. The second one, you don't. But Paul and Sheila, if you guys can help us sing, that would be awesome. Okay, we're going to do the announcements. Denise, please. Oh, you're already on it. Huh. Okay, Circle J Kids Camps right around the corner. Woo! <laughs> we need your help. Sign-up sheets are back there on the wall, and Pastor Larry's working on the description, so you'll know what you're signing up for. But we will help you. We'll train you. We got leaders that will show you what to do, so it'll be a lot of fun. So sign up. We need your help. We have a pledge drive underway to help raise money for camp. It's $5 a week. It'll go a long way. $5 investing in the eternity of a child. What a bargain, you know? And <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> hey, the wind was blowing east, wasn't it? <laughs> Anna's back from California. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, and Gail and Sue. Yeah, praise God. Good to see you guys. Thank you, Lord. Okay. You guys got it together back here? All right, awesome. The Bolathon money is due now. Bolathon money's due now, please. So if anybody's approaching you about your sponsorship, please pay so they can turn their money in, okay? Thank you. And if you have any questions about camp, you can see Pastor Larry or myself. Okay, the annual Silent March for Resurrection Sunday is going to take place this Saturday, April 15th at 9 a.m. Just meet on the north side of the Bloomington Square. We'll have signs for Carrie. Larry will be carrying the cross. I don't see him tonight, but he'll be carrying the cross and we'll be following behind him and we'll be praying, reminding people what this time of the year is all about. It ain't about the Easter Bunny. Easter Bunny didn't die for my sins. <laughs> so we need you to show up, okay? Show up and uh, show up down there on the north side of the square, 9 a.m. and we're going to walk and pray. Everywhere we put our foot, we claim that ground for Jesus, okay? Thank you, Lord. Okay, Resurrection Sunday's coming up this Sunday. So hopefully you've been inviting all your friends and neighbors. And we want a reminder to all our members, please park either in the back parking lot, across the bridge, or down in the field. And we're going to leave our front parking lot for our visitors, okay? Can we get you guys to help us out there? So... And we appreciate your cooperation. We just want to show hospitality, okay? Uh, along that line, usually it's crowded. So if you see a visitor, you probably could give your seat up. It'd be okay. It'd be all right. <laughs> I've stood many times back in the back, never sat down during the whole service. 
because we want them to feel welcome, okay? All right, the Extreme Spiritual Bodybuilding for Extreme Spiritual Warfare class is coming up starting Wednesday, April 19th. Class is from 10 a.m. to noon. And this class, sorry, this class will help you to properly interpret the Word of God and prepare you for helping others to change to become more like Christ. In order to take the class, though, you have to have already completed Discipleship 1 and 2. Sign-up sheet is posted. And you can see John Lee's for more information. We have a church work day coming up, Saturday, April 29th. We're going to be getting ready for camp. We're going to start at 9 a.m. So you can see Pastor Tony, Pastor Larry. You don't have to have a skill. If you can bend over and pick up sticks, we need you. <laughs> Maybe you can't bend over so you can drive the truck while they bend over and throw them in the back. There's something for you to do. We appreciate it. The Women of Hope will have an Italian lunch fundraiser on Sunday, April 30th, immediately after church. A sign-up sheet is posted at the information station. Adults are $5, children $1,200, $250. Look forward to seeing you there. It's that time of year again, the annual Women, uh, Women of Hope Women's uh, Retreat. Oh, man, that was pitiful. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be held May 4th through May 6th at McCormick's Creek State Park. Sister Candace Oswald will be bringing the message on Friday night and Saturday morning. A t-shirt sign-up sheet is posted at the information station, orders and money, and shirts will be due by Sunday, April 23rd. A flyer with all the details is in the information station as well. You can see Joy Flynn Cummings or Angela Bridges for more information. So you want to mark your calendars for these following events. May 6th is the Unchained Memorial Run. We're going to go around to the different cemeteries of the people, our brothers and sisters that have been laid to rest. We're going to honor them. So we leave the House of Prayer at 930. Everybody's welcome to ride with us. Um, I believe there will be maps on the uh, information station. Fire Up Day, Bike Day, Blessing of the Bikes is Sunday, May 7th. We're going to be uh, doing a run to Columbus, Indiana, immediately after church. So be gassed up, ready to go. Again, everyone's welcome to make that trip. Did I miss any announcements? Anybody? Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Well, uh, we want to sing a couple songs. You guys don't get to see us in here too often, but we do exist. We minister mostly outside the four walls. Right. Evangelistic choir. But every once in a while, we get to sing in here. So if you guys are ready, I'm telling you what, when Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You guys ready? All right. Awesome. Here we go. I have no 
God, he's something else. They try to tell us, you know, I don't like the word no anyway. A lot of y'all know that. But anyway, they tried to tell us we could, we could sing down. <laughs> we couldn't sing downtown. They said, you know, we got enough groups and we can't have no religious groups and we couldn't sing, you know, legally they weren't supposed to tell us that. They tried to tell us we couldn't sing down there. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. So anyway, we came down that street with all that equipment on our, our uh, truck in the parade. Well, the people that were supposed to bring the equipment so they could <laughs> sing down there where they told us we couldn't sing, they didn't show up. So we came around that corner, and they said, all that equipment on there is yours? I said, yep. He said, well, our people didn't show up. Now, same place, they told us we couldn't sing. He said, can we use your equipment? I said, can we sing? <laughs> <laughs> so you all know what happened. <laughs> Listen, you got a problem, I'm telling you, put it on the altar. God is a good God. He hears our cry. His ear is open to our cry. We want to uh, admonish you to put it on the altar tonight. Here we go. Amen. Hey, let me hear you say, oh. You need relief. You're tired of the pressure. Yeah. You got all this stress. 
and you need some peace, come on and get your breakthrough. breakthrough. Haven't you been suffering long enough? Make your way down to the altar, hand it over and leave it there. It's gonna be all right. 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 It's everything that you've been worried about. You need him to work it out. Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. God's good. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we're going to ask you to stand. There's another part of the service we get to give to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We didn't lose all our musicians, did we? It's offering time. I know it's different. You thought you had a minute. <laughs> oh, well, in a minute you will. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, if you have your offering in your hand, we're going to ask you to join hands and lift your offering up before the Lord. Anybody can tell me where this scripture is? Luke? Luke? Oh, man. Luke 6, 38. What does it say? Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you give, it shall be given to you again in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can we do that happy song? Can we do the happy song? As long as I got the breath for it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Because he said he loves a cheerful giver, right?
you changed my life and wiped away my past. I'm gonna shout it out from every rooftop sing. For now I know that God is for me, not against me. Chaplain Boo, can you say the blessing over the offering for us? Well, you can have a seat. We have a treat tonight. Thank the Lord. We thank God for our friend, Chaplain Larry Blue. He's from Plainfield, Indiana. And I think we're going to have a tag team presentation tonight. I'm going to let him tell you all about that. But put your hands together for him. We praise God for him. Amen. Thanks, Barney, for getting the balloon. That's my, my, that might be the highlight of the night. <laughs> Well, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Um, please give your attention to the screen if they can put some audio Nine to it. In jail. A career criminal stares at 14 years behind bars. The judge right away started to tell me, you can forget about getting a bond. You can forget about getting bail. You're going to prison. So hear how he got out. That's next. Larry Bloom. Larry has seen the worst that humanity has to offer. Larry was abused sexually by someone close to him. He's been strung out on drugs. He's been left to rot in a prison cell. So after years of trying to run away from the pain, Larry tried something new. He surrendered. You go to sleep crying yourself to sleep, literally cursing God, cussing God with the, the, the words you'd learned that day at school. Larry Blue was nine years old when his world came crashing down. His parents separated, and that same year, a relative began to physically and sexually abuse him. Larry blamed God. I was praying, obviously, and naturally for God to bring my dad back home and for the abuse to stop. And then when, you know, dad didn't come back home, got remarried, the abuse kept going. And so the anger kept building. I decided at a really early age, at nine, that God must not exist. In his teen years, Larry tried to numb his pain. I had started gambling, looking at pornography, um, drinking alcohol at 13 years old, and grew mushrooms and sold them at school, made my own acid or LSD, sold it at school. Just about anything I put my hands on was becoming an addiction. After high school, Larry served two years in the Army and stopped using drugs. But after he left the service, he became a roadie for a band and started working large concerts. Drugs and alcohol were readily available. My career fed my, my addiction and my lifestyle fed my addiction and they all just fed into each other. It was really hard to break out of that cycle um, doing that career. There was very little accountability. I didn't have to drive much when I was on the road working, so I just continued to use, drink. In his 30s, Larry stopped traveling and tried to settle down. He married and had a daughter, but his addictions were still in control. The thing I was looking for most was the next high, and it started as soon as I woke up in the morning. Larry was arrested for numerous DUIs and served short stints behind bars. After his third arrest, his wife left and his family completely cut ties. I didn't want treatment, I didn't want help. I didn't think there was anything wrong with me. I thought it was everybody else's problem and not mine. 
In September 2001, Larry was arrested for his seventh DUI and was handed a 14-year prison sentence. The judge right away started to tell me, you can forget about getting a bond, you can forget about getting bail, you're going to prison. Um, no one was taking any of my phone calls. I had burnt all the bridges, and I was finally left alone with the Lord. And that's exactly what had to happen. For the first time in years, Larry started to pray. He also started reading the Bible. You know, I knew nothing about God. I had been atheist all my life. When I started to read the Bible, I said to God, I will read every word of this. And I had read through the whole New Testament. After reading about the life and teachings of Jesus, Larry wanted more. So we went to a prison church service where the pastor challenged the inmates to give their lives to God. And at the end of that sermon, even though I, I had just honed in on every word that preacher had said, I was still reluctant to go forward. And in that split second, I thought, I've been a military policeman, I've been a stagehand, camera operator, I've experienced all these other things, drug addiction, um, I've never tried this. Um, I was one of the last people to go forward to the altar call. He put one hand right in the center of my chest and one hand around me on my back, and he started to pray. It was like somebody had taken honey out of the microwave in a, you know, like a measuring cup and just poured it down the back of my neck. And I felt this warmth just coming all over my body. And then I thought, I don't care what this is, I just want more God, just pour it on me. That changed everything for me. Larry says that day he was immediately delivered from all of his addictions. He also gained the courage to forgive his childhood abuser. It took me several days of prayer um, and asking the Lord to help me to forgive her. I realized that I was never going to grow. I was never going to fully mature as a person until I found the strength somehow to forgive my abuser. Larry was in prison less than a year when the judge gave him a six-year home detention sentence. It was later reduced to only six months. That was definitely the favor of God. There's no way an attorney could have worked that out for me. No matter how much money I would have paid to go from a six-year sentence to a six-month sentence, that was definitely the favor of God. After his release, Larry earned a degree in theology and began leading a church prison ministry. Today, he's still free from his addictions and has restored his relationship with his daughter. He's also a licensed addiction counselor for the Salvation Army. I'm sure there's young people out there like I was, I'm sure there is, that are thinking, oh no, not a guy, another guy talking about Jesus. What I would say to those people right now is, get a hold of the Lord now before more of your life is gone. God has done miraculous things in my life in such a short period of time. Don't wait, reach out for him now. Thanks, Larry. What abuse have you had? Thank you. Oh, praise the what? Lord, saints. So I want to add one small story to that, and there are so many from the day that uh, I gave my heart to the Lord, and even before that, I got baptized on Halloween day of 2001, following Sunday, November 4th, 2001, gave my heart to the Lord. But prior to that, a couple months prior to that, I, nobody received any of my phone calls anymore. I didn't have any mail. I didn't have any money on my books in the prison. Uh, I still gambled to survive so I could win some food to eat while I was locked up, and I got one phone call out. I wanted to share this one story before we introduce what we're going to talk about tonight. And I got one phone call out to my stepdad. Now, my parents were back in church at this point, point for 14 years and wouldn't take my phone calls. They were tired of hearing about me being in trouble again. So one Sunday, I just felt like the Lord was telling me to call home. I got my stepdad to answer. And he said very quickly, he said, your mom's not home from church yet. She had to help him count the offering. What do you want? And I said, I know what this is going to sound like. Just get me a Bible. And he said, I'll do what I can do to help you, but I can't make you any promises. And he hung up. Now, two weeks later, in a, in a prison, many of you that go back inside with the prison ministry here or other ministry um, opportunities Inside a prison or a jail, there's always somebody that knows what's going on, like a block boss that knows what's going on in the block. And a couple weeks after that phone call happened, the block boss told me he thought I should go the next morning to mail call. And I wasn't getting any mail. 
So I said to him, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not getting any mail. I'm not going to go. The next morning, they serve breakfast at 5 a.m. They do mail call right after that. So they did mail call, and the CO at the metal door with the little passage window to pass the trays through and the mail through had done mail call, and he was still standing there, and he had this Rubbermaid card he pushed around with all the mail on it. And in that split second, I sat there, and I had that little devil on one shoulder going, go to bed, fool, you ain't got no mail. And the other angel on the other shoulder going, go ask him, go ask him. So I walked up to that metal door with a hole, and I bent over, and the first words out of my mouth were, you got my Bible. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, you got anything that looks like a Bible? And he reaches down to the bottom shelf of this Rubbermaid cart, and he pulls out this brown shipping envelope. And he says, I got this envelope I was supposed to mail back yesterday. Doesn't have anybody's name or DOC number on it. It's prison policy. You can't have your mail without your name and your DOC number. And he said, I was supposed to mail it back yesterday, but I got off work early and I didn't have time to mess with it. He said, why do you think it's a Bible? So as I'm telling him the story of the phone call to my stepdad, he pulls a little rubber string to open the envelope, and he pulls out a brand new Bible still wrapped in cellophane. And he says, that is a Bible. So then he says, but you still don't have any proof it's yours. And sealed, still sealed inside the envelope with the brand new Bible, was this receipt where my mother had put it on her credit card to pay for it. It became my first bookmark. Yes, that's the kind of things God does. Now, just, just so you know, the very first couple things I started to research, look at one of my first bulletins. On November 4th, it says, speaking with tongues. On November 4th of 2001, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit and changed my life forever. Yeah. So... What we're going to talk about tonight, I'm, I'm really excited for this church. I'm excited for Jake. Um, some of you last year participated in the Bible studies that God blessed me to write. Because while I was locked up, I found that things would calm down in the block if a fight was getting ready to start. Or, and I was gaining commissary by gambling, okay? If I offered a ramen noodle soup, which, by the way, is worth a man's life in a prison. <laughs> Sounds like a joke, but it's true. It's, it is the financial exchange that takes place is for ramen noodles. Okay? So as I gained food and commissary by gambling, if something would start to go crazy in the block, I'd offer a ramen noodle soup if somebody could tell me where a Bible passage was at. And as I was wearing this thing out, as you can see, the pages are pretty worn. It's a pretty haggard old Bible. But I love the passage in 1 Samuel chapter 21 when he goes to the priest at Nob. And he has no weapons. He's been chased. He has no food. And he goes to the priest and he asks for weapons. And the priest says, well, why don't you have any weapons with you? I mean, you're, you know, you're, you're David. You're supposed to be, you know, a king, a conqueror. And he makes up a lie to tell the priest. He says, well, my mission was very prudent. I had to leave so quickly. I don't have any weapons. I don't have any food. Do you have any weapons or food? And he says, well, yes. I've got the sword that you slew Goliath with. Every time I buy a new Bible, I go back to the sword that was hidden in the corner of the tent behind a piece of cloth, under an ephod, as the scripture says. I love to still transpire the old notes from the first sword over to the new Bibles that I buy, and it gives me a chance to go back and remember what God had set me free from. Amen. Now, it was from this Bible that I started to write these two levels of Bible studies, which now, you know, 15 years later, um, 
by the way, I've passed that around if you want to take a look at that. You'll notice there's no name or DOC number on the envelope. Um, so some of the questions I'd start to ask, I'd start to write down and take notes. And then when I got out, I wrote my first level of Bible studies. Now, last year and in the 15 years since, my Bible studies have been mailed all over the Midwest to multiple prisons, multiple jails. And we went through both of the levels last year together as a church here. If you participated in those Bible studies, we please stand. Thank you again for coming. We had a really good time, amen? Uh, we got through level one. We started taking field trips. We, we kind of got off the hook after a while. I've been known to swing on a rope out over the Ohio River and do the Tarzan yell um, on the way to see the ark. Um, so we had a good time, okay? Now, I want you to know as we start tonight, we're going to launch another Bible study here. Um, Jake's going to lead it. We're going to pray over Jake tonight. I wanted to launch this with Jake tonight because I want you to know how much I believe in this young man. To hand off this work that God gave me is a big deal to me, to trust him with this mantle. Um, and I know he's capable. I know he's able. Last year at a church service, I spoke over Jake, Jake that I believe he's going to be a preacher of the gospel. Amen. I still believe that. So um, I wanted to be here to launch this because I want all of you to not to go. And we hope, by the way, all of you that participated last year, you've got a homework assignment. You know I like to give homework. Those of you that came. Okay. Your homework assignment those of you that participated last year, you're probably faithful alumni to the Monday night Bible study, is my guess, because that's the night we did it on last year. Your homework assignment now is to reach out to somebody and invite them to come when Jake is teaching this Bible study on Tuesday nights. Okay, somebody new. Let this be an outreach to bring some new people into this house. That God, this is an anointed place of worship. You should not be ashamed of what's going on here. You should be proud to invite somebody to come to this. And it's going to be in good hands. Okay? So, there's most of you here that didn't do the Bible study. So, if I could get some help from Frank and some other folks... Now, the way this works in level one is you get the question page first. Do you remember this? <laughs> so this is a little uh, litmus test on how much you think you know about the Bible. The name of the lesson is called Get to Know the Lord. So as they pass out those answer sheets, feel free to write your names. And feel free to answer the ones you know. And let's see how much you know. So, you know what? This is a total surprise to you. And wait a minute. You know, while, we, while they're doing that, can we have a round of applause for the praise team? Amen. Also, also, listen, you saw on my testimony video, I'm an old stagehand, camera operator for the sports networks. And probably too many times the production staff in this church don't get recognized. So will you please get a round of applause of the ladies and gentlemen that's, that's on our production crew. So the surprise is, can you put a little soft music on while they're working on the answers? Anything, Pastor Tony, you pick. I trust you, brother. You may start, you may begin, fill in the ones you know.
Pastor Tony. Perfect. Oh, you can't use your Bibles yet. Uh uh. Put your electronic devices away. That's cheating, and you're in church. No Bibles or electronic devices yet. Okay, here's a little encouragement for you. Jeanette wants to share with you how many she got when she did this. How many did you get? <laughs> so don't feel bad. <laughs> Answer the ones you know. Something else you'll notice with both of these levels of Bible study, they gradually and progressively get harder. So if you find this one difficult, it just kind of just gets gradually harder to, to push you, to challenge you. <laughs> it might have been because I sent her all the answer pages. <laughs> Now, if you took this last year, you should be done already. Uh, some of our hope is if maybe you haven't been able to come on Monday nights because of work and now you can come on Tuesdays. So that's another hope we have to draw more people that maybe couldn't come because of Monday night time constraints. So, And there's a sign-up sheet posted back on the back bulletin board to sign up. We'll make that announcement again. So, how many people got all 10 questions right? Okay. How many think you got eight right? That's a graduate, by the way, from last year. <laughs> how many think you got six? A couple? 
There's another graduate. Two more graduates got six. Okay, how about half of them, five? How many think you got five? Four? Three? It's almost like you're not two, can't have one, one, one. Can't have one, 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 in the man with Okay. Okay, now if I can get some help handing out the answer sheets. Now you may also use your electronic devices in your Bibles. You want some more, Frank? You want some? Stack, yep, there's a stack right there. And I'll give you a few minutes now to fill in the blanks or even correct some of your previous answers. Did you check your papers for us? Uh, our fax comes in with the copier. We just found a fax among there. I'm looking for another fax. So if you, <laughs> sorry, if you see a fax with my name on it, may I have it, please? There Thank is you. a lost church confidential document <laughs> floating in the building. It's absolutely confidential with my name on it. So can you bring it to me if it's in the papers? We just found one, so would you look? Just the fax, only the fax. How we doing? You getting close? No? A few more minutes? Okay, now the way Jake will do this at the class is he'll actually go through each question with you. He'll assign or ask you to participate and assign even the scripture references that you see on the answer page so that you participate right along with the class. But tonight, for the interest of time, because I just got good news, there's going to be a couple people getting baptized tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. So I want to, I, I'm going to speak very briefly here and we're going to talk about some of the answers so that there's still some time remaining so we can get the baptisms done 
So, Jake, you want to join me on stage, please? And, and would you please give him a round of applause? Oh, come on. Am I at the right church? That's better. That's better. Now, I know this young man's already serving in several capacities, and this is going to be what I think is probably going to be a no-brainer for him. So, um, uh, Jeanette, will you have somebody point out which one of the clipboards is the sign-up sheet for this Tuesday night class? So before we start going over the answers, we can keep them in suspense for just a second and tell them right there is the sign-up sheet for the Tuesday night Bible study class. Once we see, see enough, if there's enough people that sign up, then they'll announce the date that it will begin. Okay, any questions about that? Don't everybody rush over there to sign up all at once. Yes. No, this is free. Absolutely free. By the way, and Jeanette asked me to expound a little bit on level two. Level two is college level material. And it is absolutely free. Okay, uh, the graduates, graduates of level two, would you agree that it's college level material? Yes, yes. Okay, and it is absolutely no cost. Yeah, and don't let that scare you. Listen, level two is more about the history of the beginning of the church. And that's what kind of led us to do some of the, the field trips we did to see the Gutenberg Bible over at the Lilly uh, Library at IU. We went on a field trip to see the Ark after the Ark opened down in Kentucky. So um, level two really digs in deep about the history of the church, what the disciples went through. So it's very good stuff, and it's college-level material. So that's level two. Okay, so tonight, in the interest of time, um, you got to, oh, let me do this too real quick. Before we go over the answers, on your answer page, will you take a look there closer to the bottom? There's a poem there. This was written by my bunkie. When I was, my, my last bit in prison, my bunkie was Mark Hensley, and he wrote this poem. It says, on a day all clouded and gray, my heart was all troubled and my mind was astray. To my surprise came a feeling deep down inside, it was my Lord Jesus. He was right by my side. He said, no more heartaches and no more pain. All you have to do is call on my name. So I call on his name and he comes right in. Now he's my Lord and Savior as well as my best friend. So I have to credit Mark for that. Uh, we had many good times studying the word together right out of that old Bible that I passed around the room. So today, uh, let's flip over to the question page and see who knows. Why don't you run right down that list? Starting with number one? Yep. All right. Who, who has enough confidence to think that they got number one right? <laughs> oh, um, several. Several. Let's go with D. That is correct. Well, are you well, you're the teacher? Are you? Does she get credit for that? Eh, Scarlet's a shade of red. We'll we'll let it pass. All right. Yep. It's a girly <laughs> shade. We'll let you. <laughs> All right. That's one right. All right. We still got nine more. We'll see how we do. All right. Who has the confidence to think that they got number two right? Lenore. I don't know. I didn't write the answer. Is that the right? <laughs> is that <laughs> All right, it's right. Is it, <laughs> is it God's phone answer. number? <laughs> Who knows the passage? Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and wonderful things thou did not know. God's phone number. Jeremiah 33, 3. All right, little you guys know, I actually missed most of class one, so I'm taking <laughs> this mostly the first time too. So that's so why he's some learning of my with you. are empty. All right, uh, number three. It says, Proverbs 24, 13 says, my son, eat thou. Who can finish the rest of that? Scott? All right, keep going, because it is. All right. I, mm, I still love correct. honey on biscuit today. Oh, yeah. All right, number four. It starts with Mark 27, Virginia. Amen. All right, that was another one that I didn't get a chance to fill out, so we're going to go with yes. <laughs> Check all the above. All the above. All right, number five, it's Psalm 16, 8. 
Uh, mom. Is it? <laughs> He's, is it? I wrote yes. right hand, the version yeah. I said, or virgin I said, had, virgin, same difference, was by my side. I yeah. said right hand, by my side, that'll work. Yeah, and by the way, we don't tell you, in the Bible study, we don't tell you you have to have a certain version, okay? Any version will do, okay? That was a good illustration of that. All right. Number one of the true and false. So you have a 50-50 shot of being right. <laughs> but you also had a 50-50 shot of being wrong. <laughs> Chances are I was probably wrong on all five of these. So I was never good at true or false in school. All right. Number one, Matthew 25, 33 through 46 says, Thou shalt cat, oh, eat thy steak well done on the grill. True or false? That's got to be in the Bible. Oh, come on. That's not in there? I <laughs> 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 Go ahead. All right, number two says in Isaiah forty eleven, the Lord said to be the shepherd. He is the shepherd. I got that one wrong because I misread it. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, in Chronicle or number three says in Chronicles two seven, the Lord instructed the use of orange linen and otter skin to wrap the candlestick in. Linda Webb, what'd you get? False. That's correct. It is false. All right. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell them. Tell them. You're going to embarrass her, but go ahead. <laughs> so... If if one of them failed, they all failed, and they all had Linda Webb's name on it. <laughs> well, I wanted her to come, you know. I had asked her a couple times to come, so then we started teasing her about it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. All right. Number four, Matthew 13, 56 says, the Lord had four earthly sisters. True, false. I don't know. Somebody's got to be right. <laughs> what is it? Somebody know? Mike, you know? Is it three? It only says he had sisters. doesn't say how many. Well, I'm going to say true that he had four since we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody's right. All right, number five. In Mark 1, 6, John the Baptist wore camel's hair and ate locust and wild honey. True or false? That's true, All believe right, it or not. That's pretty wild, man. All right. I wonder if he ate the locusts live, you know? <laughs> Let's see. So I got about seven. <laughs> and the three that I didn't fill out are the ones that I got wrong. <laughs> so I think I did all right. How did you, you all do? Who got, uh, who got eight right? A graduate. Cheater. Linda Webb, because she had plenty of chances to get them wrong before. Um, who got uh, seven right? Good, good job, good job. Six? Again, we're back to the auction. I'm going to go five. We're going to go five. Five, five, five. Four? Three? Two? Everybody close your eyes while I ask for the ones that only got one right. <laughs> okay, so we really hurried through it. Okay, because of timing. Um, he's going to be able to slow down. I've told him, take this thing, make it his own. Okay, this is just baseline material for him to use because I want him to be blessed and anointed with this and use it as an outreach tool and make it his own. Bring some of his own ideas in. He's going to ask you for ideas. Okay, so what is the homework for the graduates? Okay. Is everybody going to promise me that if you're a graduate, you're going to tell people about this new Bible study on Tuesday nights for them to call the church or sign up on the sign-up sheet? If they're not here tonight, tell them to sign up, okay? We want to be behind this, okay, so that we see this really benefit this church. That's what I'm praying for. 
I've got one thing left. I brought a, I've written 16 newspaper articles. Here's one of them I wrote around Easter. There's extra copies back there in your literature rack. Um, it's called Fit to be Tied at Easter. So that's back there as well if you want to read some of my newspaper stuff. Um, and then um, I'd like to take a couple minutes then and pray for Jake as we launch this. Okay, I really want, I really want him to be blessed. I want the people that come to be blessed. And I really believe I'm leaving this in good hands. Can I get an amen? amen. Before, okay, we all please stand then. Before that, um, you're all invited, so my homework's done. <laughs> um, <laughs> and secondly, okay, so this is a new thing for me. I'm used to being up here and preaching. I'm used to being over in the kids and teaching. But teaching a class is something that's new, right? So if you don't get your expectations too high, honestly, because I don't know how well I'm going to do, but I believe I'm going to do well because I'm not the one teaching the class, right? I am, but I'm not, yeah. right? Amen. So with that being said, we can carry Amen. on with what you were doing. Okay. Will you all just uh, bow your heads and stretch your hands forward toward Jake? And let me grab some anointing oil real quick. <clears throat> Give me just a second. That symbol I've just made on your forehead, Jake, the symbol of the cross is also the symbol of the Tav. If you were here for the prayer shut-in, that is the Hebrew symbol of completion. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for this time the laughter we've enjoyed together, the laughter that will continue to come from this class and the joy that will be generated through this class and this young man as he embarks on this mission for you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for this time and this place. And as we pray your blessings and anointing over him, Father, we just pray that you will guide and order every thought, every word, every step, every action by the power, grace, and mercy of your Holy Spirit through Jake to teach this class, Lord. Help him to make this his own, that he listens to you for what you want him to say. God, don't help him or don't let him look back in doubt about thinking, would Chaplain Blue say this? Would Chaplain Blue say that? What would Chaplain Blue do? God, lead him to do what you want him to do. Lead him to make it his own through you. Work through him, Lord Jesus. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things. Amen. Amen. Now, I uh, want to do the baptisms, or you want to? I'm going to step down and get out of the way. Oh, you want me to stay? We want to open up the altars. We don't ever want to leave a time where um, we don't give you an opportunity, you know, to give your heart to Jesus. And so we're going to ask you to, we're going to ask our praise team to come back okay. up. And uh, okay. can we have the uh, baptismal stay workers help us out with the baptism? And uh, yeah, I'll get to you in one second. Okay. <laughs> and so <clears throat> um, would you help us pray? Because this is such an awesome time for those that are getting baptized. They're making a declaration before all these witnesses that they made Jesus Christ Lord of their life. This is an important time. Could you help us pray? And uh, we're going to ask uh, our altar workers to come and help us pray. If you have a need tonight, don't leave out with that need. There's no need to do that because the presence of God is here to meet your need. And if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please come. And we thank God for that. Uh, Barney was just showing me that we got a text um, that Mike Johnson came through his surgery. And uh, the report is he's cancer free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank God. And we've had several that have had surgery today or yesterday. Please 
lift them up in prayer. Little bit, uh, Gigi, uh, Mike Johnson, I might have missed some, but at least those three in the last couple of days. Bill Hammond tomorrow, Dallas, and yes. Debbie Baker. And who? Debbie Baker. Debbie Baker. Many people to pray for, okay? And so we're going to celebrate with these people that are uh, getting baptized. If you can hang around, it would be awesome. We're going to ask our praise team to uh, do some music. And if you need prayer, please come. We have people that will be willing to pray with you, okay? Okay. I want to say something. Um, it's just a very um, humbling experience to see my son where he's at. Mm -hmm. About three years ago, Jake was heading on a downhill slope and he was going fast. And the one thing that kept coming to my mind was when the Lord promised us that we raise our children in the way they should go and when they get old they won't depart. Well, Jake wasn't old. I was, but he wasn't. But it was hard to take my hand off of the situation. We were going through some really hard times. Jake's dad was got sent to prison. We lost another home. So it was just me and Jake, and he was just not going in the right direction. So I prayed, Lord, show me how to take my hands off of him and let you work because every time I would put my hands in, God would take his off. I took my hands off of Jacob and it was hard to see him hurt. And there was one person that I can remember that truly believed in Jacob and that was Pastor Larry, including and then myself. Within a year, I've seen this boy do not a 180, but a 360. <laughs> and he's been going in the right direction ever since. Now, I'm not saying we don't have our little disagreements, but as far as my son worshiping the Lord the way he does, that makes me very proud to be Amen. his mom. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, the altars are open. You're welcome to come and get prayer if you need it, please. <laughs>
Praise God. Thank you, Lord. This is Michelle, and we want to celebrate her confession of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord of her life. Amen? Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Michelle, that dear Lord, that your spirit would always be upon her, O oh Lord. That dear Lord, that she would see you in everything that she does, O oh Lord. That dear Lord, you would put that hedge of protection around her, O oh Lord, guarding her, guarding her mind from the enemy, O oh Lord. Dear Lord, revealing to her when you're speaking to her, O oh Lord, and guiding each and every footstep that she takes. Dear Lord, I pray blessings upon her, O oh Lord, and I pray that you look after her each and every day. And dear Lord, I pray that when she lays her head at bed at night, that dear Lord, that she'll have sweet sleep when she raises in the morning. And I thank you, and I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Michelle, upon the confession of your faith that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. of faith that Jesus Christ is Lord of her life. Father God, I pray for Melissa that dear Lord, that dear Lord, your your spirit will never leave her, oh Lord. That dear Lord, it will always churn. That dear Lord, that you'll give her the ministry that she needs to, to continue. To, that dear Lord, her light will shine wherever she goes, oh Lord. That dear Lord, things will change in her life that she could never imagine that changed, oh Lord, because of you. Dear Lord, bless her and help her, O oh Lord. And dear Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Hold your nose. Listen, upon the confession of your faith that Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, I now baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. for the forgiveness of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. to be in the house of the God and see some people get baptized. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory. We all please stand with us and I'll close us in prayer and then you'll be dismissed. You bow your heads in reverence to the Lord. Father God, it's good to be back in your house tonight and see familiar, smiling family member faces. And Lord, we just praise you that two more join the family tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God, we thank you for this house, this anointed house of God to worship in. 
Lord, as we go from this place tonight, help us to fulfill our missionary work for you. God, help us to reach out to invite people Sunday to church for your resurrection celebration. Easter Bunny didn't die for nothing but a good gravy mix. But Lord, you died and rose from the grave for our sins. So Lord, we just praise you and thank you that over the next few days of this week, you're going to bring people into our path to invite to come and feel the joy in your presence and worship with us. Now, God, I pray your blessing and anointing upon everybody here tonight that you'll keep them safe as they travel home, Lord Jesus. Let no weapon formed against them prosper. Send ministering angels to encamp around their vehicles, Lord God, so that they can fulfill their destiny and their mission to reach out and reach to lost souls in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We praise you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name. And, and we want to pray for Pastor Larry. Yes. Gracie tonight, Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much that you're giving them rest and peace and safety. God, even the shepherd needed some time to lay the staff down for a minute. And God, as he rests, bring him back refreshed. Bring him back even more anointed. If, if, if we could imagine him being more anointed... Blow our minds with us, Lord. Blow our minds with it that he comes back rested and refreshed. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody joined and said, amen. amen. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, don't forget to sign up for the Tuesday night Bible study. Yeah.